In my original video about my inverted dipole antenna, I didn't have the results I wanted, so I decided to tweak it. I'll tell you if I succeeded or not. Stay tuned. So this is my original setup of my inverted dipole. A dipole is a straight line antenna with a center feed line. Each element of the dipole is a quarter of a wavelength long, which in my case was sized to a total of 66 feet or 33 feet per element. This was designed for the 40 meter band. However, because of my limited space and the lack of tall trees, the antenna had drooping ends, which is why it's called an inverted dipole design. A standard dipole antenna is more directional in a broadband direction to the antenna wire. But once you droop the ends, the antenna becomes more directional to wherever the ends point. Unfortunately, my antenna wasn't a straightforward inverted dipole because of the lack of space. It was leaning backwards, meaning looking at it from a top view, it wasn't a straight line. I thought this may be affecting the antenna, so I decided to change the way it was set up. Here's a three-dimensional view of the original one I set up. Note that not only did the ends droop down, but it also appears to be leaning back. I used the SWR meter built into my Zygu X5105, and the results show that it had a totally bad SWR in the 20 meter band, which was an important band to have. The 20 meter band is a daytime band as well as a DX band, and I didn't want to lose out on that. So I made a few changes to the antenna. First, in order to make my change, I had to make the antenna center feed line higher. I used a painter's pole as a mast, and it still had a capacity to go up to a maximum length of 23 feet when fully extended. I had it only at 15 feet before plus height from the ground of around 8 to 9 feet, it was only up to 24 feet or so. Now fully extended, I get it up to 32 feet, which is perfect since that's one-fourth wavelength high. However, regardless of the height, the antenna is blocked by the house structure, so it is not perfect. Lower than one-fourth wavelength, your antenna becomes more NVIS or local. NVIS means near vertical incident sky wave, which allows for local contacts. It behaves with the usual HF skip propagation once you get it above one fourth wavelength and even more so at one half wavelength. I moved one leg of the dipole backwards so it formed a straight line with the other leg. This removed the lean. Let me show you that from a top view. From a dipole to an inverted dipole, the directionality changes by 90 degrees, and an inverted dipole is much more directional. I didn't have enough space on the one end to fully extend the leg, so I ran part of it along the fence. From what I read, this should not have a major effect on the antenna. I also couldn't help the obstructions to the antenna. There's a neighbor's house which affected one end, or my house which blocked most of the antenna sideways. The other side, however, is an open hill, so there are pluses and minuses. This is the problem with obstructions both below the antenna, due to height, and obstructions around it. All of these affect the SWR. Now it's time to see the effect on the SWR. First, let me check the 40 meter band. This antenna length is made to be resonant to the 40 meter band. Looks like it is, though it seems like a narrow notch. It doesn't cover the entire band. Something to think about in the future. Then let's try the 80 meter band, just to see how bad it is. Actually, it's not too bad. It also has a narrow usable notch. 
When I actually used it, it does receive strong signals in the 80 meter band, even with parts at a high SWR. 80 meter tends to be local traffic anyway, so the signals are bound to be stronger, especially at night. This is the true test. What happened to the 20 meter band? In the original antenna video, the 20 meter band was totally non-resident. The SWR was too high for the entire band, so it was unusable. Here, looks like there's a nice resident hole in the band and it's receiving well in this range. So overall, this is much improved. I can't tell for sure if the improvement is because I raised the height to 32 feet from 24 feet or because I straightened the dipole and got rid of the lean. I may have to test that again to see if it makes a difference. Again, for those new to HF radio, the 20 meter band is very important. Most DXs happen in the 20 meter band, whereas 80 and 40 meters tend to be more like AM radio, meaning local. Also, 80 and 40 meters are nighttime bands, while the 20 meter band is more of a daytime band. The SWR was also good for me on the other bands like 30, 17, 15, 12 and 10 meters, but those bands are mostly dead nowadays for me, maybe because of the low sunspot activity. So in an emergency, the 20 meter band is really important for daytime and long distance contacts, meaning 2,500 miles and further. I'm really glad I made progress here. This 40 meter inverted dipole is functional now for the important bands of 80, 40, and 20 meters. The entire band is not covered here, so I have to allow for some adjustments later on. Or I can play with raising the ends with another couple of painter poles. If you enjoy my content about privacy related communications, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell.